Hi guys, it's me Sini again. So here we have a part 2 video for BUP 7.1 and 7.2. So for my previous video, I only focused on BUP 7.1, which is the account cost pengeluaran. So after you understood the components inside your cost pengeluaran, which is the elements that I've talked about, uh, cost bahan langsung, buru langsung, belanja langsung, and cost overhead. So once you've understand the element, now the important part is next, you gotta understand how the format actually looks like in an actual penyata form. So in this video, I'm gonna attach that as well. I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like in a penyata format and what are you gonna do if the question asks you to prepare part A, account cost pengeluaran, and then proceed to ask for part B, mengirakan uh, titik pulang model. How are you supposed to do that and all will be from your own answer. So in order to know how to do that type of question, make sure you finish watching this video and next you're gonna see the next screen. Okay, so now in this screen here that I'm gonna show you guys is about Kilang Biscuit Lee. So this Kilang Biscuit Lee, what they do, of course, they are selling biscuits. So in this Biscuits Kilang, uh, the factory, we're gonna see a lot of things such as machineries, we're gonna see their materials and stuff like that. So what truly matters in our Bob 7.1 are very basic items sahaja. We're not gonna go very in-depth into the small, small parts of your Kilang. So here, I've shown you guys that what is if cost pengelaran and TPM question actually decided to merge together. So how are we going to handle that situation if it were to happen? So first thing, you got to understand first, okay, what items will you see in your kilang? Now over here in this uh, kilang that I've drawn out for you guys, you have seen that I've separated them into groups of its own, right? On the left hand side, you will see your bahan buruh dengan belanja, while on the right hand side, you see, susut nilai machine, sewa, insurance, kada bayaran dengan gaji pengurus. So the main reason why I split them this way, I'll be explaining right now. So make sure you watch finish this video. Eh? Okay, so bahan buruh belanja. Now please don't misunderstand my belanja right here. I'm trying to explain the patent, hard chipta dan royalty because the group itself is called belanja langsung. So basically, whatever that you have here is of langsung. Now why do they have this langsung word beside of them? Eh? It's because we actually will change the figure and change the amount according to how much we need to produce right now in the kilang. So it goes according to your demand. Lah, okay? Berapa ka unit yang perlu dikeluarkan? So one thing that you notice what I said just now is according to how many units you want to make. So if now I want to make one unit, Let's say one unit costs me total of bahan buruh dengan belanja langsung is 5 ringgit. Then what about when it goes up to 100 unit? Does it still stay as 5 ringgit? It doesn't. It will actually increase us to 500 ringgit. So what does it mean right here that I'm trying to say? Uh, is that these costs will actually change according to what? change according to units. So that's why they also have another name, which is if you were to do BAP 7.1, we call them Bahan Buruh Dengan Belanja. But if you go into BAP 7.2, this total will be considered as your cost berubah. So why? Because eh? I say already, it will constantly change according to how many units you were to produce. That's why here is your info if you were to use 7.1 to answer your 7.2 items. So cost berubah is also defined as your bahan buruh belanja langsung total up from BAP 7.1. Now let's look at the right set. Okay, on the right side, we have susut nilai machine, we have sewa, we have insurance, kada bayaran dengan gaji pengurus. So what is all this that I'm grouping together and why are they together? Leh? It's because they have a similarity. They are always fixed, no matter what. So how do I say fixed? It's not just the, uh, the amount, okay? I'm talking about how consistent we need to pay for them. Example, sewa. If I tell you every month, sebulan, Yelah, RM 500. One month is 500. If now I'm having Chinese New Year break, okay, I'm going to close my kilang for an entire month. Does that mean that I don't have to pay rent to the person who rent the place to me? Of course, no. I still have to consistent pay my saver, right? So I will have time seat to 12 months. So you see, does your saver get affected by the unit you produce? So right now, even if you open your kilang and you're not doing any production work at all, 
no biscuits are being produced. Do you still need to pay sewo? You still need to pay. That's why all these have a similarity of being fixed costs. So if you are talking about 0.7.1, which is your bulk 7.1 cost pengeluaran, then we will use them as this group. They are called cost overhead. But the same group will also be applied to where? Also be applied to 7.2 TPM chapter, but it will be used as cost tetap. So you see, why is it that it's possible 7.1, 7.2 might connect together to form a full 25 marks question or even 20 marks question? It's because their things are related to each other. It's not exactly different. It's the same one. That's why you need to understand lah, the concept of berubah dengan tetap. Berubah changes according to unit, while tetap doesn't change no matter how many units you are producing. Okay, so over here that I've done explaining the items here, lah, okay. I'm going to go down and show you guys the format because from the previous video that I'm talking about component, I didn't do much about BUP 7.1. I only went through part by part, which is bahan buruh belanja dengan cost overhead. So right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how the format actually looks like. So let's start from your first part of the format, cost bahan langsung. Now in cost bahan langsung, I told you guys, I emphasized about it from the previous part 1 video, which you will need to apply cost jualan format right here. Now, if until this point, you are still left with the few uh, 20 to 30 days before your SPM, uh, make sure you got to memorize well what cost jualan because it's a very useful format. In this chapter, as long as you know how to work with your cost jualan, you can score your cost bahan langsung already. Why? Because it's exactly the same things that you use. What? Example inventory hour. You're going to use what? You're going to use belian. Now, if you were to have pulangan, you also include down here minus pulangan belian. But the good news is you do not need to write belian per se or anything such as cost belian, cost barang untuk di job. No need. You just need to leave them as blank. So, leave them blank. Continue. Plus ADI. So, remember what I said from the previous video. We are not going to include upah in this section because upah will go under buruh langsung already. So, we're going to split that out and add your ADI. And then what you're going to find is add together with inventory hour minus inventory arc here. So, at the end of it, you're not going to call it as cost jalan anymore. We are just, you know, kind of using cost jalan format. So, at the end of uh, this inventory arc here, you're going to name it as cost bahan langsung digunakan. How much you have used from it. So this is how your cost bahan langsung format is going to look like. Now moving on for buru langsung, belanja langsung dengan cost overhead, they do not have a formula. So as long as you see anything that is for buru langsung, put them in. Anything for belanja langsung, also put them in, will do. No need to care about the sequence, but cost bahan langsung. Yes, you have to follow cost jalan format. Okay, eh? so down here after we have added on all the langsung items, you'll be found with the cost prima. So this cost prima is going to continue at with cost overhead. So technically, if you were to connect it to your bab seven point two lah, where are you gonna find your cost beruba? This one. Cost prima is your cost beruba because it will change according to units produced. While cost overhead is defined as your cost tetap if you were to be doing bug 7.2 question underneath of your account cost pengeluaran. Okay, so found cost prima, cost overhead already add together all. Then before we can find cost pengeluaran, what you gotta do? Add KDP hour minus KDP up here. So I'll just say you treat it like a normal inventory hour dengan inventory hour. Okay, how you usually work with them. Awa plus okay, minus. So you do that, then you're gonna find your answer, cost pengeluaran. So this is about 7.1. Now moving on, which is to this side here on the right hand side, I've written Bob 7.2's item, cost tetap, cost beruba so you need, harga jualan so you need. Now just now I only mentioned uh, cost beruba. What if I were to find cost beruba so you need? So over here, let me just write down for you guys. You guys can jot down somewhere in your blank piece of paper. So cost setup is always taken from cost overheads jumlah. 
So you copy from that, that is the number that you needed. While cos Baruba say you need, you're going to take cos Prima for sure. But you do understand that whatever you see inside account pengeluaran is considered as a total. I don't need the total right now. I want to know how much it costs me to produce one unit of product. So in order to do that, we will take cos Prima's figure divided by unit Dikeluarkan. So this one will actually be given in the question itself. So where at your maklumat tambahan or either before they ask for cost berubah seunit, they will go by B. Cost berubah seunit. Um, find out mah. So they will give you some clue. Unit yang dikeluarkan ialah uh, 100 unit. So what you do? Divide by 100 unit lah. Then you will find your cost berubah seunit. So similar a situation will look for your harga jualan say you need. If they were to ask you to find harga jualan say you need yourself, what you do? You take jualan to be divided by unit D drop. So this unit will also be given out of your account cost pengelaran. It will be at part C of your anda dikehendaki. You just need to see clearly how much is dikeluarkan and how much is dijualkan. So what if they only give you one type of unit? I'll say if they only give you one unit, then that unit will be used for both unit dikeluarkan dengan unit dijual. We just assume so because they didn't give you other information. So once you have divided, then you are prep finished. You have total three information for you to proceed to the next part which is to fulfill BAP 7.2 formula itself. So BAP 7.2 actually is very simple one. We only have three formulas to remember. First one, margin charuman so you need. So margin charuman so you need, uh, how do I explain it? I would say, example now, I'm good at only drawing cars. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys this example here. Let's say this car that I have produced inside my kilang. Uh, Costs me 70,000 to make. 70,000. So let me ask you guys, okay? You can answer me in your heart. Will you still sell back the same price, 70,000? Now, of course, as a seller, you make this car 70,000. Takan, you don't want to earn, okay? You're not doing charity. You won't even sell for a lesser price. Instead, you will sell for a higher price. So that's why here comes in where they tell you, Haga Jalan Se Unit Gareta Yela 90k. Okay, so can you guys differentiate? This 70,000 is how much you spend to make it. This is what we call cost berubah se unit. It's not the jumlah cost. Because why I'm saying to make it. Did I include the sewer and all the fan and the air cons and stuff like that? No. Okay, it's just cost berubah se unit. Meanwhile, the 90k is our harga jualan se unit. So now, why do I don't call it keuntungan? I call it margin charuman se unit. It's because from every unit, I want to see how much I can get back so I can continue to pay for other expenses. That's why it's called margin charuman se unit sahaja, not keuntungan. So what you gotta do? Your formula is to take harga jualan se unit minus cost berubah se unit. Then you will find your answer. Margin Charuman Sini in short form MC slash U. So, of course, this is for you when you want to do rough calculation on the side on a question paper, it's not on your question on your answer paper. Eh? Make sure that if you want to write on your answer paper, you got to write them in full form. Margin Charuman Sini so equals to how much? Now, after you found your margin Charuman Sini, so then you can proceed to your Titik Pulang model. So, here's a little bit of advice because Titik Pulang model usually will be used for graph question. So what you need to take note is you'll take a look at the anda tika hendaki. Did they ask for you to draw graph or not? If yes, then I will advise you to find out the RM, TPM at the same time. So why? Uh, maybe a lot of you say, teacher, the, the, the question didn't ask me for TPM dalam bentuk RM also. Why bother leh? It's because if you were to find unit and RM, later on your graph is so much easier to solve that's why you can see the intersection point. Where is it? Does it land on the part you have plotted as TPM? So follow this unit and RM answer that you found from this TPM formula. So that's why I would say it depends on whether you have graph or not. Lah. If you don't have graph, then it's okay. Just ignore the RM. But if you were to have, then yes, find the unit, uh, find the unit and also the RM out. So over here. How should I solve Titik Pulang model's formula? The formula is actually 
taking cos theta to be divided by margin charuman sine. So if you cannot get into your head, why is it cos theta on the top? It's because just now, didn't we cover cos beruba already? Should I still cover Joomla cost? Of course not. Cost per bar is done paying. Now I only need to settle my cost the top. So the reason why we divide it by margin charuman so you need uh, is because I want to know how many times I need to sell this car only I can get to cover all my cost the So we are talking about unit. How many units you need to sell in order to earn enough of margin charuman so you need to cover that which means that you don't get any keuntungan, you don't get any kerugian. Untung? No. Rugi? Also? No. So this TPM is very important for a person who produce their own product because we don't want to suffer loss from it. So I got to count out what is the minimum amount I need to sell in order to not suffer from losses. I want to earn. So this TPM serves two purposes. One is to avoid you from kerugian. Second is to make sure you sell enough so that you get to untung from this production okay so to find your tpm dalam rm right simple you just take your answer from above tpm dalam bentuk unit how many units are you selling how much per unit you will multiply by harga jalan se unit so let's say uh, a lot of times you guys don't realize what you're doing a lot of students will do what tpm times back to margin charuman se unit what you will get you will get back to cost the top why? Because you just divided by MC slash U. That's why you get this answer, ma. You times back margin charuman, so you need, didn't you get back to cost the up again? So don't do that mistake. Make sure, multiply by Hagel Jalan, so you need, because I want to see how much of sales in RM is considered as minimum point. Okay, so after you have solved your TPM already, the last formula is untung sasaran se unit. This untung sasaran uh, is actually how much we aim to earn. So untung sasaran got two one actually either in unit ataupun RM form. So it depends on what they give you. If inside the question they told you that apakah keuntungan akan didapati jika menjual berapa unit. So if they give you the unit amount, means you gotta find RM. So the formula goes this way. Untung sasaran in unit at the outside part equals to cost the top plus untung sasaran in RM form divided by margin charuman se unit. So did you guys realize that, eh, how come this formula like so familiar one? Macam TPM one? Ah yeah, actually is. Because TPM is the minimum point. If you want to earn, of course you must be above of TPM. That's why we top up our untung sasaran, the amount that you want to earn, so that I know how much you need I need to sell in order to pass through TPM at the same time earn the amount that you aim for. So here, this is the formula, lah, okay? So it's impossible that they miss out both types of untung sasaran. So you just need to take note on what info they give you. If they give you untung sasaran in unit, how are you going to solve it? Treat it like your maths question. You already have cost up. You already have margin charuman, so you need. So how you do? You move the margin charuman, so you need over, multiply, then second, move your cost up over to be minus. Then you will get your answer. This is your untung sasaran dalam RM. But if we were to be asking for untung sasaran dalam unit, which means they must provide you, US dalam RM, then you just solve as per how the formula looks like. Lah. So keyword is what? Keyword is this. Keuntungan. Berapakah keuntungan yang akan didapati? So as long as the sentence give you this word keuntungan, you only have one formula to deal with, which is untung sasaran. That's it. Okay, so now this is part two's ending. I'll be having another part where I'll teach you guys how to draw graph and as well as showing you guys that example question that I talked about from the previous minute. So stay tuned for my part three video. I will attach that question together to show you guys. Okay, bye-bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.